I aim to set the music that's bonking around in my noggin, and I aim to also to set it down if and when it moves me. If it doesn't move me, I erase it or throw it in the wastebasket and start over. So I decided that uh, to set the whole of uh, Plump Jack, and uh, I had committed to record it. I know Getty, and, and you know, this is a man who, uh, full of so much humanity and, and, um, and, and almost like Falstaff, like you would imagine, uh, you know, Falstaff uh, behaving like in real life. God, that's sweet. Are my masters let us it's about people and it's it's meant to touch people and make them laugh the rise and fall of Falstaff, when he's a bosom buddy of uh, Hal and he, uh, at the top of his game, then when Falstaff thinks he's really going to break in the chips, when he gets the news that his drinking buddy, is, um, Prince Hal, is now Henry V, uh, Falstaff, boy, he's going to, he rides to London with all the Falstaffians, he thinks he's going to cash in. And the king stares him down and reads him the riot act. And finally, not to come near our person by 10 mile. I'm sure when Falstaff was groveling on the ground hearing this rebuke, he was convinced his neck was going to go in the noose. There is music that seems rather ethereal and kind of otherworldly. This is not that kind of thing. This music strikes to the heart. We wanted to be perfect. We wanted it to be absolutely perfect for him. I did see a lot of his personality coming through, not just in the in the score, but in the recording process. And I was just listening as an observer, not much as much as the singer of the piece. And here comes this stunning pathos in the strings with this tenor solo that could just break your heart. And then a monk's chorus comes in after that and breaks your heart even further. I, it's just, it's beautiful music.
given the opportunity to work with the maestro, which we have here, um, on really bringing the Shakespeare to life. One of the things about Mr. Getty is that Shakespeare requires this kind of attention. This particular story of Plump Jack requires a lot of tweak. It requires a lot of um, thought, it, and, 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 it, and, it, and it transforms itself over time. <laughs> I can count on it. Shit. <laughs> and I do believe that Shakespeare himself would be very proud of that because I think his, every one of his works went through transitional periods. <laughs> He's chosen to show this side of, of Dame Quickly that I don't think many people are familiar with in the opera world, for instance, because in Verdi she's, she's a major comic character. And uh, I was really pleased, actually, when I was asked to do this. They, they told me Dame Quickly, and I assumed it would be very similar to the, the Verdi Falstaff character. And instead, she really seems to be the one who um, has great tenderness for Falstaff. It is a, a great humanity which speaks in this and through this music and as far as I uh, saw, my audience loves this music. It's music for the people. I think it is a contemporary opera, uh, in a new sense of contemporary. It's my latching on to what I think Shakespeare had. Shakespeare, I suppose, like me, was writing for an imaginary audience that happened to be tuned to his wavelengths. And I think I'm on his. <laughs>